So I don't know if I'm going to keep doing this, but I had a really dumb idea, but I think it's going to be super fun. So I'm going to do it once, see how it goes, and maybe do it again. I don't know. When I talk about things or explain ideas, I get into a unique way of talking about it. So I'm going to do some segments where I take stories that it's been a while since I read them and I'm going to summarize them in my weird way and see how it goes. I'm not going to pressure memory. I'm just going to go with it. So we're going to see how that goes. So I haven't read this book in like two maybe three years but I did just get the second one uh, on thrift books for a nice cheap price uh, and I'm very excited to read it so I have not reread this book in a while so I'm gonna tell you what happens except I don't remember character's name so we're gonna have fun with this okay so the premise of this story is Layla, Leah, Layla, Layla, Leah, Leah, Leah is a princess who's like, I can't marry a man I just met because, you know, she ain't no Disney princess. Oh my God, I hate myself already for this. This is going to be so bad. Uh, she has an arranged marriage and her and her best friend run away because she don't want to deal with that. And she has a bunch of older brothers and she's like, nope, they don't need me. I ain't doing this. And she goes, okay, King one, King two, Queen one, Queen two. Okay, those are the parents. Like, if this is Romeo and Juliet, they're the Capulets and the Montagues, and we don't really care about the rest of our names. We have Leah, she's our princey princess. Then we have a princey prince. I don't remember his name either. And then we have an assassin. Uh, I haven't decided if there's going to be spoilers in this video, so possible spoilers. And then we have Leah's best friend. She's the girlfriend. She's the bestie. She's the maid that helps her escape. And a bunch of other miscellaneous characters, like the person that takes them in. Um, I'm just gonna call her innkeeper. Yeah, so those are our players and let's let's do this. So Leah is like, I can't marry a man I just met. So she and her bestie maid run away from her life on the day of her wedding. She has an arranged marriage to a prince she has never met. Um, and so the prince is like, how dare she? Uh, I'm gonna go find her because she wrote me this letter and I must understand why she doesn't want to marry me. Then also, there's an assassin, and the assassin's like, I have to find her, I have to kill her. So we have these two people that are looking for her. Um, and in some of their chapters, it's given the title assassin or prince. Hence why I can't really remember their names. And then it's all it's told from their perspective and her perspective, but their perspectives aren't given their names. So we have both of their perspectives, but we don't know who is who when she meets them. So she's running away and her and her best friends are like, we have finally escaped the labors of hard life in a palace. Whoa, he's me. Eventually things happen and she finds out her bestie's pregnant. She's pregnant with a baby and she's in love and she's really happy for her. But there's a war happening and the person that the bestie's in love with is a soldier. So they're trying to find a way to let him know that the bestie's pregnant. Um, in the meanwhile, they find a lovely innkeeper who takes them in and lets her stay. And Leah's father and her brothers are like, we must find her, Arr! politics. Uh, Cause she also, oh, that's right. She stole something. I forgot about that. She stole something important it was like a scroll or something from one of her father's like crotchety old advisors she stole it that's also part of the reason they're looking for her because she took this and she was like really sassy about it so she left it so that they knew that she took it and so they're in the village and she's in just enjoying la 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 enjoying living in a village like this so princey prince and assassin meet up don't know who they are. They each give fake names. I don't remember their fake names. I think it's like Rafe and something else. Luke. I don't know. <laughs> We're going to call them Rafe and Luke. We don't know who's the prince and who's the assassin. They both introduce themselves with fake names. And their chapters are either told from giving us their name or giving us prince or assassin. And doesn't intercross. So we have Rafe. I think I don't name I could look at it in the book but that defeats the purpose so we're calling him Rafe I just don't like the way that sounds coming out we're not wrong we're we're calling him Reggie we're gonna call Luke and Reggie those aren't their actual days but that's what I'm gonna call them so 
Reggie and Luke come to the tavern where they're looking and they both realize that this is her and they introduce them and they're both all flirty flirty with her and she's flirty flirty back and she's like no they can't know I'm a princess I'll never know uh, but flirtation happens there's like a celebration and she ends up kind of falling for both of them and the besties baby daddy uh, dies in the war I think and her brother comes and sees her at one point, Leah's brother. Uh, and she's like, I'm happy here. And he's like, you're not safe, but you're my sister and I'd let you do what you want to do. Got brotherly princey things to do, so I'm going to go. And they both do kind of like sweet things for her. So you learn that the assassin kind of like doesn't want to kill her. And the prince was mad at her, but he's also now falling in love with her. And now they're becoming rivals. And there's a cute, like, celebration. And the two of them end up going against each other in, like, a log wrestle roll mud thing. I don't really remember. Um, and there's a cute back and forth. But they're actually fighting for her affection. And eventually, you know, she really starts to fall more for, I think, Reggie. I feel like a Ronald Reggie. I don't remember what I named him anyway. Colin is starting to fall for Reggie, though equally likes Luke. There's an encounter that lets us know or hint to which one is which, and I correctly guessed it right. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, there's going to be spoilers if I'm just explaining this book. I'm just, I guess I'm going to have to keep spoiling it. Anywho, so Reggie is like, meet me here, and he's going to go send an important letter off for people. Um, and the assassin knows that his assassin group is like, what the hell is taking you so long? You got to hurry up. If you don't hurry up, we're going to do it. So he's like, oh, I got to make a move. I got to do something. Uh, and the prince is like, I have to, I have to marry her. I have to do this right. So I'm going to talk to the people from my kingdom and send them a letter. I was trying to word it so it was still surprised, but I was just said it. So Reggie is the prince and Luke is the assassin, okay? That's not their name, but we're just gonna keep going with this. Reggie, he goes off to meet his kingsmen. I can't remember the name. And, but the assassins come and she's like, Luke, what are you doing here? I'm supposed to meet Reggie. He's like, I'm sorry, I have to do this. And they kidnap her and they go on a long quest in the desert. And then Reggie is chasing after them. Like, I shall rescue her. I love her. I was going to marry her, but now I want to marry her. Because you can't marry a man you just met, but you can marry a man who lies about his name to you. Anywho, they meet gypsies along the way. The best friend is left heartbroken. Her best friend is missing. She has a baby. The baby daddy is dead. Her brother finds out she's missing. The king kind of catches on to what's happening. And there's chaos. And there's some magical thing that's happening. Like she has a tattoo that has to do with the prophecy and the scroll that she took. I don't really remember. And she's really mad at Luke. She's like, Luke, you lied to me. Bird, bird, bird. But like they're still doing like this flirtation thing. And she likes Reggie better. And she knows that she does. But now she's starting to spend more time with Luke and learn who the real Luke is. And he wasn't a bad boy. He was just tormented. So therefore it makes it, his actions okay. And we condone it when they have a sad sob story. And there's one guy that's a real jerk that's really trying to get her. And she keeps trying to sneak away. And good for her. She has some really good moments. And for some reason she goes into a forest. And there's like a wolf bear thing, I think. I, something happens there's like mystical magic something happening um something about the tattoo her mother put on her for her wedding and she washed most of it off but some of it just stayed on and there's some there's some weird magical power thing happening with that anyway she runs away through the forest gets out of the forest the assassins are chasing her uh, reggie's almost after her luke's after her her family's after her and there's a, oh, the assassins are from a third kingdom. <laughs> I forgot about that. Who want her and the scroll that she took to cause chaos and fight more. Her brother is going to war against them. To be like, Rawr, my sister. And there's a massacre. Conveniently, Leia's on the top of like a cliff and sees the whole thing happen. So she runs down like, no, you can't do this. You can't, you can't. Don't do this. And so she goes. And, like, they're all dead. And the bad guys are there. And the assassins are there. And there are some good guys that are left there. She's like, well, we have to bury them all. For some reason, they bury them all by hand. And they do what she says. And then they go and, like, basically rust her and escort her 
into the palace. And that's when Reggie shows up. And he's like, you can't do this. Like, one reason why I shouldn't kill you now, Reggie. Luke's, like, really mad because they're, like, still rivals in love and rivals in life. And she's like, but I love him. But I love him. And he, that's when he reveals that he's been the prince this whole time because only they knew the contents of the letter. And he says, and he uses it as proof of who he is. And she's like, oh, you're the one. And they go in to this kingdom where there's a mean king a bad guy i guess and luke is really connected and he's like i'm sorry you really shouldn't have come i have no choice i gotta take you to and then that's where it ends yeah that's that's all i remember about this book this book my cousin just got me to write, read this first book i borrowed it from her and i bought my own copy because i want to reread it so i can then buy my own copy of the rest of them so i can have them because i like to own books the Kiss of Deception. I just realized I haven't said the name of this book once in this whole video. I just held it up. It's The Kiss of Deception. <laughs> the first book in the Revenant Chronicles uh, by Mary Pearson. Wow, I'm on a roll today. The original cover has her with a flower crown and a flowery dress in the field. And like she's reaching her hand back and it's all dramatic like. And the cover looks like a trashy YA romance novel. And the title... The Kiss of Deception sounds like a trashy YA romance novel. And the plot, one's a prince, one's an assassin, who will she love, also sounds like a trashy YA novel. But it's better than that. It's really fun. It's really good. As the book goes on, it kind of goes away from where you think it's going and more into like the politics. And I hear it continues to grow like that through the rest of the trilogy. So I'm, I'm excited to read it. But that's all I remember about this first book so yeah was this informative was it entertaining will i ever do this again who knows let me know your thoughts in the comments i post videos twice a week maybe not a video like this again i i i apologize i'm i'm just i'm just weird i apologize for so many things about who i am i post videos twice a week i'll see you guys next time